In this video, I'm going to show you how to add WooCommerce variation swatches for WooCommerce in just a few simple steps. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. For this example, I'll be using a Hello theme by Elementor and the variation swatches for WooCommerce by WooSuite. Okay, so the first step is navigate to WooSuite.com and navigate to where it says WooCommerce variation swatches. Here you can download the pro version or the free version. Once you've downloaded the plugin, let's head back over to our dashboard. Here I've already installed and activated the Hello theme created by Elementor. You can use whichever Elementor compatible theme you'd like. Just for this example, I'm using the Hello theme just to keep it simple. So the next step is to navigate to plugins and add new. And here you basically want to install the Variation Swatches plugin by WooSuite. So here you just upload it and choose the current file in which you've just downloaded and click install. Once you've installed, you want to click activate it. I won't be going through these steps because I've already got it installed. Then you'll see a Variation Swatches menu here. And if you've downloaded a pro version, you will see the variation swatches menu here under the Wii Suite menu. So just look out for the variation swatches menu. We'll go ahead and click on it. And then here I've already got a few features enabled. So let me go ahead and deactivate this one. And let's save changes. Firstly, let's have a look at our product page just to see how it's looking. Okay, and here you can see our product page. We've got the drop down variation options here. So if you're in a rush or you just want to have tidied this up as quickly as possible, you can just go ahead and click on where it says auto convert to drop down to label. Enable this option and then you can select the particular attribute in which you want it to take effect on. So here I've selected color and size. So when I hit save, we'll see that this drop down will now be a label and here we are so visually your customers can quickly see all the available options so they can quickly select a blue large sorry green large or maybe blue large if you want to take it a step further and for example this color um, option here you want it to be actual colors we can go ahead back here to resuite to variation swatches and let's deactivate the auto drop down to label for the color option and then here where it says enable color swatches let's go ahead and enable this one and then let's select color and then let's save changes here you can see a prompt to go ahead and configure the attribute term so let's go ahead and do so and here you can see all my color terms. So for example, I've got blue, gray, green, red, and yellow. And then here we just want to select the appropriate color. So for example, blue, of course, we want to go ahead and select the blue. And then let's just update this. And then for gray, let's go ahead and select a gray. And again, let's click update. And we do this for all our different terms. So green. Let's go ahead and select green. Let's select a nicer green. And then let's hit update. And then red. This should be fine. Update. And then finally, I believe yellow. So let's go ahead and select yellow. Let's select a, yeah, this one. Then let's hit update. And now that we've finally configured our attribute term, we can head back over to our product page and let's just go ahead and refresh this. Okay, perfect. And here you can see our color swatches are displaying perfectly. Um, let's take this one step further as well. Let's say we want to enable dual color selection. So again, let's head back over to the variation swatches menu and then let's navigate down to where it says enable dual color. Let's enable this option. Let's hit save changes. So now that we'll, we've enabled the dual swatches, we need to go ahead and configure them. So again, we can click on this configure term 
and it will take us to our attribute page with all our different terms for that particular attribute. So since I've already got them open, well, actually, let's redo it just so we don't confuse anyone. And then let's refresh this page. And then here we'll see the appropriate colors in which we selected earlier. So for our dual color swatches, let's go ahead and edit this blue attribute here. Well, attribute term. And we'll also we'll select the green and red also. So let's open this in a new tab. And this one. And then where it says, is it dual? Well, we'll select yes. And our secondary color for this one will be... Um, and once that's updated, let's navigate back to our product page. And now let's refresh this option here. And the perfect here you can see our dual color swatches. So this is perfect for those situation where one color don't quite describe the particular product that you're offering. Okay, and let's have a look at a few other options. So let's say for this color option here, let's say we wanted to display the actual product instead of the color. So we have two options for this. So let's head back to our variation swatches settings here. And we can just go ahead and disable this um, colors attribute here. And we can also disable this dual color option here. And then we can go ahead and enable image swatches. So here there's two options. So we can manually assign our image swatches to the particular attribute. Or let's say if you've got a large shop and you want to automatically assign the featured image as the particular swatch, you can go ahead and do this here where it says auto convert drop down to image. So let's go ahead and test out this option and see. Let's test out this auto convert drop down to image and let's see how it works. And in here we can select color and then let's hit save changes and it will only work for those particular product which has been assigned a featured image so let's head to our product page and let's refresh this page and then here you can see that for our color attribute it's actually displaying the product image which is perfect i'm going to go ahead and change the display of this slightly so two things i want to change i want to change the swatch shape I'm going to select this square here and then also I want to change the ratio, the image ratio. So I want it to look slightly nicer. So let's select, um, let's select four to five and then for the position, we'll leave it as default for now. Let's save this change and let's see how our swatch is looking. So let's refresh this product page. Okay, that looks fine. I think we need to have the image a bit more centered. So let's center the image slightly and let's change the size of the swatch also. So where it says image position, let's go ahead and center this one. Let's say center bottom right. And then one more thing, we wanna change the width of the swatch, the image swatch in particular. So I want it to be, let's say 70 and let's save changes. Okay, now let's refresh this page. Okay, perfect, and that looks nice. Okay, I think you get the idea, so you can play with the settings just to ensure it fits um, your branding. The next thing I wanna show you is manually assigning these images to your swatches. So for example, let's disable this option here, and then let's enable the standard image swatch. So this is perfect if, for example, instead of showing the featured image, you wanna show a different image like a pattern. So let's innate, select this color option here. And then again, here will prompt us to go ahead and actually upload the particular images for each term attribute. 
So let's open this in a new tab and let's save changes also. Let's have a look at how our product page looks. Currently these should be blank because we haven't assigned any images to our swatches yet. So as you can see, it's blank. Now let's head back here. And I got to that page by clicking on this configure terms here. So here we can go ahead and set a particular image for these individual terms. So for example, let's open blue, green and red again. And let's imagine we wanted to display um, a particular pattern. It can be a product image as well, but this is great. For example, if you're selling iPhone cases and you provide different finishes like a glass finish, um, a leather finish for a case. Um, I think you get the idea. So here we can go ahead and select from an existing image or we can upload um, a particular pattern. Okay, let's select choose image. So this is sort of blue one. So let's, um, yeah, let's change it to this one. It currently won't match what the item terms are saying, but I think you get the idea. So let's go ahead and select this image here. And let's update and then finally the red one. Okay, with these item terms updated, let's go back over to our product page and then let's refresh this page. Okay, perfect. And there you can see our custom images for each item term. And we can change the shape again. Let's go ahead and modify the shape. Let's choose this one. And we'll just save changes. And then let's refresh this page. Okay, perfect. So just, that's just a few things you can do with a variation of Swatches plugin using Elementor. And if we also visit the product shop page or category page, we can also display the Swatches on the archive page to make it easier for our customers while selecting a particular product. To enable the swatches on the product archive page, you wanna head back over to the settings area. And then here where it says archive slash shop, you wanna enable this option where it says show swatches label. So toggle this on, once you've toggled it on, you'd be able to see the swatches on a shop page. We can set the alignment and we can choose the position of where we want to show our swatches. We can enable or disable the tooltip. Let's say, for example, you've got over 10 swatches to choose from. You can go ahead and limit the amount of swatch to show. In this case, since we've only got three swatches displaying, let's say let's display it to two and then it will show a plus icon prompting users to click through and view more of your product selection. So let's head back over to our store archive page and let's refresh this option and then here you can see this plus icon prompting us to click through to the product page and see the full selection and that's how you add that variation swatches to elemental in just a few simple steps if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more videos like this all the links and resources mentioned in this video will be in the description below. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment also and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.